We're in my little shack up in Somerset County. My name is Tim Sanner, um, where I make powder horns. I started making powder horns in 1994. It actually spurred from my wife got me a flintlock rifle for Christmas one year. And when I went to work the next day and told the guys what I got, one of them says, you need to make a powder horn for yourself. And the next day he brought me a real small horn to mess around with and it snowballed from there. I was always interested in the history of things. And the, but the reading Mark Baker's book, what kind of put me over the edge on it, the Sons of a Trackless Forest, that's where I got really interested on the daily things that the long hunters did. The people that actually went out and hunted and made a living that way. That's what pushed me over the edge into the the reenacting side of it and trying to be more historically accurate. And even now, you know, what, 23 years later, I'm still finding different things to do and try to, horn making has endless possibilities. I almost hate saying, but in the 18th century, horn was the modern day plastic. Um, they used it for spoons, powder horns, grease horns. They would fasten the metal bracket to it where they were kept grease in it for the wagon wheel axles. Um, combs, cups, mugs. I mean, it's just, the it, it list goes on and on, the things that horn was used for. They also had lays. They weren't electric lays, they were treadle lays or spring pole lays that they used to do the same thing I'm doing. They did it just a lot slower where I could flip the switch and it's run. Uh, if something got caught in it, it was your power that was running it so you could instantly stop it. Where now if you have a motor turning it and you get your beard stuck in it, it hurts. <laughs> it does too. <laughs> um, I see so many different things today that, and no criticism you guys, but the younger folks don't have the desire to preserve these things. I see a lot of the craft going by the wayside. Uh, blacksmithing, for instance, you don't see a lot of people doing that. Um, so if you really look at that, I mean, it's like, how long is this gonna last? You know, and we gotta keep it going. This is, our, this is our nation's history. I mean, this is where we were founded from. This is where it all came from. Um, it needs to be preserved. People need to know in future generations. And I think by what I'm doing and trying to keep the designs and everything as historically accurate as I can. I'm not saying I'm going to change the world or anything like that, but you know, people down say if my horns are still around in a hundred years, I'll look at that and know where that came from, and they can be able to see the the significance of the designs that are on them and how it was tried to pre be preserved.